What is up everybody, it's your boy Duty and back again with another video and oh my lord. Sadly your boy Duty has to report that the joy streak has ended. That's right, the joy streak was at 1 and then last night after Chrono No Tip uh, stream where the dents withheld support. Uh, our boy Phil and he made $8 in tips. The joy streak has ended at 1, but I'm pretty sure... Phil will try to continue to push the joy streak and make sure that the dents continue supporting and paying him back for his investment. So let's see what Phil has to say on his daily wrap. Nice. Um, so that was cool. Then on tonight's late stream, it was a continuation of Chrono Trigger on my new mini PC. Uh, tonight, no technical issues, went down without a hitch. Great progress. <clears throat> Very fun. Had a great time. Good interactive audience. Now, did we have a ton of viewers? No. Probably around 200 to 250 all night. The support was not good. And the thing is, the GTA stream was outstanding. So, I'm not complaining. But, yeah, I am a little nervous. Because this is a game I've wanted to play for years. People seem to express, you know, desire to see me play this throwback game. And now I finally have a mini PC to do it. I'm doing it. And tonight was one of the slowest streams I've done in months. Again, I'm not concerned because I had already off-put it with a really greatly supported GTA stream. But, it's probably not going to happen every single time. If you're someone who's checked out this playthrough so far and enjoyed it, thanks. Please continue to watch. Please engage with the videos. Please consider supporting it in some way. Even if you're not watching it live, if you maybe want to do a super thanks on a video or maybe leave a tip, that would be absolutely great if you could. Because I want to play this game at length. We're four hours in. We got a good chunk into it, by the way. <clears throat> the game is great. I can't wait to play more this coming um, uh, Sunday night, so the next time we're playing it. And, I, you know, it's a great throwback. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I hope the passion is coming through in the playthrough. I'm doing voice acting for the certain characters and stuff, which is nice. So give it a look. And I hope you enjoy it, and please consider supporting it. Okay, so overall today, good variety day. Great amount of content. Had fun. Thanks for joining me, and thanks for the support. I love how he talks about how, uh, you know, he, he's not worried about the support and then rambles on about worrying about the support. Uh, yeah, he did okay with uh, uh, with his uh, GTA, one of the dents. I believe it was Dan the Man, under Dan Man or whatever, the hell, D-Man. Uh, I think it's the same person. Dropped 100 bucks. And if it wasn't for that, he would have just, again, been in that $50, $60 tip range. And, of course, he got zero memberships. He got uh, barely any Super Chats. Uh, so if it wasn't for that, yes, he probably would have been in here complaining and bitching about support. He would have went the whole Wulong, uh, playthrough, you know, crying about no one supporting it and he's toughing it out and, oh, this is something you guys wanted me to do and, and I'm, and, and I'm doing it, which is nonsense. No one asked for Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is a fine game. It's old. I mean, yes, I understand that, you know, it is a nice throwback. But it's one of those games that you play for yourself. No one wants to watch anyone stream Chrono Triggers, really, honestly. Uh, but of course, this is one of Phil's favorite. And he thought, you know, if he showed his passion, if he whipped out the, the, the terrible accents, that people would come in droves and support. And it just hasn't been that way. This is what the third playthrough he did on this. And uh, the first one was a dud. The second one, or the first one I think was okay. The second one was a dud. And this was a dud. And it's probably going to continue being a dud. No, I mean, he barely had 200 people there watching that nonsense. Most of the people that were there were LARPers and detractors. And no one really cares. I mean, it's just... I I, I don't know what he, what he expects to get out of this. I mean, I think he... Personally, I think he's lucky he made 8 bucks on that stream. But, you know, keep 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 listening out if, 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 his, if his day streams are trashed like they, they usually are. Uh, you'll can he you'll continue hear him hearing him ramp up the calls for more support, and sadly the joy streak has ended at one. I mean it just hasn't picked up. Uh, it, unlike the vest streak from about a month back, uh, which I think got to about 13 streams before it ended. Yeah, the joy streak is just not picking up. So uh, the dents need to really really understand the investment Phil made uh, in this joystick and in the fighting content and really need to step it up. So let's see what else Phil had to say. Tomorrow, Friday, which is the 11th, is a little weird and here's why. We're gonna do a level one podcast like usual in the morning. And yes, it's Street Fighter Friday, meaning all day long will be Street Fighter 6 gameplay, which I'm sure many people are happy for because we've had a few days away from it. However, I need to be interrupted in the afternoon. It could be as early as noon. 
It could be later than that. The interruption could be fast or it could be a bit. I don't know. All right. So being that that's the case, I can't guarantee you exactly what we're doing when tomorrow. Here's my plan. I will go live with the podcast at the usual time, 1045 a.m. Pacific time and start a little after 11 like I usually do. If I'm going to be interrupted on the earlier side, like noonish, I'll let you know. As soon as I know, we'll end the podcast early. Hopefully, we'll get the interruption out of the way. And then we'll jump into Street Fighter for the rest of, of uh, you know, the afternoon. But what if the interruption doesn't happen right away? Well, we'll go do a normal-length podcast, probably like 12.45, 1 p.m.-ish. Hopefully, by then, we'll know what's going on and go from there. You know, worst case, if the interruption's not done by then, there's not much I can do. Maybe we will jump into Street Fighter, do some of that. <clears throat> if I get interrupted, I get interrupted, and there's nothing I can do about it. Okay? So that's the deal for tomorrow. Sorry about this annoying interruption, but it is what it is. It has to happen. And once it's done, move forward with all the gameplay for the rest of the day. So what is the gameplay? Okay, so I said my, I, I talked a little bit about this on one of my videos that I posted yesterday. Uh, I didn't talk about it, but I kind of hinted to, to it in the title and in my comment section where uh, apparently, I, I'm pretty sure what it is, someone's going to come out to either give them an estimate or fix something in the house. And the interesting thing is that I've heard from many different circles that after there was a stream, I think it was, oh, which one was, I think it was when the TV went, went bad and Phil started moving his camera around and they started kind of seeing how dilapidated his room was. And they noticed that the, uh, smoke alarm, which is a hard wire smoke alarm, which is, which is required by many of these condos was, was, was not on the wall. It was detached. And I know from reading and watching, you know, people talk and, and various forums and discords is that I know that a lot of people reported Phil, both to his uh, HOA and also to the Renton uh, License and Inspection Department. And those are the people that are responsible for making sure that buildings are up to code, houses are up to code and so on. And you can file reports and typically they get investigated. So um, I find it very interesting that Phil has been fixing things when you know things have been broken for years and he refuses to put any money into anything how long has that shower how long has that toilet been busted the, the dishwasher is going on almost two years that it's been broken and he fails to replace it i have a theory and again this is just a theory i don't have any hardcore proof the only thing i have to base it on is phil actually spending money to fix things is that there may have been a report uh someone at the h hoa or the the management company of the building found out or someone from license inspection did come out and take a look and found that phil's house isn't up to code there were many probably many violations and of course when that happens you get fined um you get you you can get fined uh you know depending on how bad it is uh, they could force you to move out of the house and condemn the house. I don't think it's to that level where the house should be condemned, but I mean like broken toilets, broken uh, bathroom, leaky, I said things that may be leaking. Uh, that smoke alarm that isn't there, that's a hardwire smoke alarm. So I'm pretty sure that when it goes off, it probably goes to a, you know, it probably goes to like a central monitoring station. Uh, just in case there is a file fire being that the uh, Phil's property if you ever see in a review they're detached they're attached home so his house is or his condo and it's not really a condo he lives in a townhouse his townhouse is connected to other townhouses so whatever he does impacts his neighbors so if his house catches on fire uh you know and the fire department isn't notified quick enough it could cause damage to the other properties so I'm some I'm surmising that Someone reached out to Phil and basically said, hey, you need to get this fixed right away. And that's why he's working on kind of the smaller things. Uh, I'm pretty sure after the interruption and whatever he needs to get fixed, he'll tell everyone what, what it is. Uh, I'm guessing it's just he's probably getting a an estimate on something uh, to, to fix in the house, either a dishwasher, something on the cheaper, smaller side. Uh, because we know there are about maybe five or six things that Phil needs to fix on that property, uh, you know, to make sure that he is up to code. Um, having a broken dishwasher isn't one of those, but it's an issue if it's leaking. I mean, that, that could cause damage and, and cause structural problems, especially if it's leaking mold and so on, which can spread to the other property. Uh, but that smoke alarm, that toilet, whatever is leaking, if, if it's still leaking back there for Phil, uh, and the other problem that, you know, uh, that, the ants 
and his over over you know his uh, the, the the yard that's overgrown with weeds i mean all of those things um you know eventually people your neighbors especially in a gated community get tired of watching that crap and and they're they they will report and say stuff so it could just be that someone's finally had it with phil's nonsense and reported him so it should be very interesting if we keep hearing him talking about you know other interruptions uh and minor repairs here and there it could be because of that because we all know phil it, it it takes it would take phil being homeless uh for him to actually fork out money to, to, to fix something on his property it, it just would uh and i just find it so odd and curious that now uh like in in back to back couple weeks He's now repairing things on his property. So anyway, uh, again, that's just an assumption. That's me just speculating. I don't have any hardcore proof except the fact that, you know, we know Phil's behavior and this pattern seems a bit odd of him actually fixing things in the snort fort. Anyway, that's really it. All he does is talk about his stupid schedule after this. I really don't care about that. I just wanted to highlight the chrono no tip and the end of the joy streak and also the... Um, repairs at the snort fort so hope you guys enjoyed the video peace out